All right, welcome. We are at episode 24 of our Quick Bible Thoughts, but we're in our series on dreams. And so today we're going to be looking at a dream. Uh, actually, uh, yesterday or the previous video, if you haven't seen it yet, uh, we were dealing with Abimelech's dream. That's the first dream in the Bible. Uh, but today's dream, the next dream that we find as it appears in the Bible, is you guessed it maybe incorrectly or correctly, uh, Jacob's first dream. We see that in Genesis 28. Um, so here's what I want you to be thinking about. As we go through these, I want you to kind of be thinking about details that you know about the people. Um, so we, we're, I'm, I'm specifically want you to look about uh, how does he use it with, and we're, for, for all intents and purposes, we'll call them Gentiles um, and Jews. But what I really mean by that is those who are in a covenant and those who are not, uh, because really up to this point in Genesis, there's no such thing as a Jew. Uh, they're covenant people, um, but that's a whole other thing. But anyways, so here's what the deal. In the previous dream, we had Abimelech. Abimelech's a Philistine king. So what do we know about this pagan king and his relationship to God and, and the, the, the way that God speaks to him in a dream? Today, I want you to look at how God speaks to this Jew, to this, gen, this uh, covenant person, what you know is it's about it's different, and not just because you know there's some elements in this one. There's some symbolism. There's some imagery uh, as well, uh, and it's not needing to be interpreted. Well, yeah, maybe some of it is, um, but let's watch and uh, kind of follow through the text and let's see what happens. So I'm going to open up my text now, and uh, we're going to be reading in Genesis. And so here we are, Genesis 28. So um, we start in 28, but just to clarify where we are at. This is not that long after his stealing of Esau's blessing, okay? So Esau's blessing has been stolen. Stolen. Now he's run away, fear of his life. So here we go. Now Jacob left Beersheba and went towards Haran, and he reached a certain place, and he spent the night there because the sun had set. Uh, he took one of the stones from the place and put it there at his head, and he laid down in that place, and he dreamed. And the stairway was set on the ground with its top reaching into the sky, and God's angels were going up and down on it. And the Lord there was standing beside it, beside him. Uh, and, and so, okay, a couple things. First off, what is the stairway all about? Uh, right now, we're just seeing it, okay? And that's not really the point. And the Lord is standing. He's standing. Interesting. What is he seeing? Who is he seeing? Okay. Um, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father, Abraham, the God of Isaac, uh, and I'll give you, you and your offspring, the land which you're lying, and your offspring will be like that of the dust of the earth, and you'll spread out uh, toward the west and the east and the north and the south, and all the peoples of the earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. Um, look, I'm with you and will watch over you wherever you go, and I'll bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I've done what I promised you. So, so far in the dream, message I just, I'm going to give you everything. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to keep you. Now, up to this point, Jacob's not really been a kind guy. He's deceived his father, stole his brother, uh, his birthright and his blessing. But God's message is primarily, hey man, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to keep you. I'm going to be with you all the way. I'm going to bless you. And I'm going to give you the promises that I gave to your father. And look at the response. When Jacob awoke, verse 16, uh, he said, surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, what an awesome place this is. This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Now, if we end it right there, um, that would be great because then you would look and you would say, see, divine revelation given to a covenantal person. It's awesome. Um, and that's what I need. I need someone just to give me a dream. If God would just give me a dream, I would follow him. That's what God is doing to poor Jacob here. He's just giving him an encouragement. Um, let's finish the rest of the verses though. All right. Early in the morning, Jacob took up the stone that was near his head and he set it up as a marker and he poured oil on it. So obviously, by the way, Jacob knows he's had an experience with God. Let me stop here. Once again, in this whole pattern, anybody who has had a dream so far, and there's only been two, but believe me, we got more to go look at, know that they have encountered God in a dream. Done. Okay, let's go back. Pours oil on top, named the place Bethel, though previously the city's name was Luz. There's a little editorial note by Moses there. And Jacob made a vow. 
if God will be with me and watch over me during the journey that I'm making, and if he provides me with food to eat and clothing to wear, and if I return safely to my father's family, then the Lord will be my God. The stone that I have set up as the marker will be God's house, and I will give to you a tenth of all that you give to me. Okay, let me just say this. This line set here is something that is problematic, okay? Because there's really only two ways, give or take, to explain this. One way is he's saying, look, if, since you, if this all this is true, then yes, you are my God. Thank you. But the problem is that if word, See, he's just been given divine information. He has encountered the God of the Bible. And he, at the end of this, I believe is really what he's saying is, if you do all these things for me, then I will worship you. Now, he could mean that if you do all these things and I'll follow you as long as you do with them. But I actually kind of think when you look at the story of Jacob, um, that, um, you know, uh, that, that he's kind of saying, uh, once you do it all for me, then I will. But it, it could be either way. Once you do it or if, then as long as you're doing all these things, I follow. Do you understand his response to this divine encounter is, if you do all the things that I that you say you're going to do, then I'll actually follow you. So this is what's interesting about this dream is God has a relationship with Jacob because God made a promise to Jacob's ancestors, to, to Abraham, um, that he was going to bless the world through his seed. Now, it's interesting, if you look at a video I just made on another series I'm doing with Dr. Andrew Marquez, uh, we call it the OTXNT, it's Old Testament, Christ, New Testament. We talked about the seed of Abraham and God's choice to bless the world through this seed. Uh, and Jacob is, the line is part of that line. It's a descendant will come from Jacob and it won't from date Jacob's descendants. And so God has got this special relationship because he's chosen the people of Abraham. He's chosen them. And so here we are, though, this chosen person is not a very good person. In fact, for most of Jacob's life, it seems like he spent most of his time away and only later comes, kind of illustrating what he actually does. It's only later. Um, but it's interesting. God's words towards this covenant person is, I'm just, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to give you everything. I want to take care of you. Um, uh, there's not really a lot of negativity in here. This is somebody who God is connected to because of his faithfulness to his covenant to them. And there is no judgment of him because he's part of that covenant. I think there's an interesting piece to think about there. This is, by the way, another illustration. I like to tell people, if you believe that uh, if only God would just kind of appear, whisper, give you a nice dream, that you will follow him faithfully. Um, I think this story is here to show you um, that ain't going to happen. Because if you are unfaithful even now, if, if you're saying what you're going to need is that little extra to really do it, then what you're saying is when that little extra wears off, you know, you might be like Abraham, like Jacob here. Oh, it was awesome right when he had it. And then he gave, give him, give him to the morning. And then I realized, mm, I don't know. See, I think that's an illustration of, you know, you've got God's word, stick with God's word. Don't go looking for extra. Uh, and if he does, if God does bless you with a dream, tremendous. But him appearing, him giving you that extra piece that you think it's going to take, ain't going to happen that way. Um, I, I think that's the human heart. Is we're gonna, human heart, we're going to look for ways to get around it, ways to not have to listen to it and to believe God. All right, so there we go. Another little piece, another little person to kind of check out this dream. Um, see if you can figure out what the next one will be. And uh, as you read along, if you want to look at some more of those, um, try to figure out some more of the pattern.